Now, is this your first attempt for the civil services? No, sir. This is my third attempt. Your third attempt. And uh, for the interview? Second interview, sir. Okay, okay. Anuja, you are a biochemical engineer. Yes, sir. So, how can you use your knowledge in dealing with environmental issues? Sir, biochemical engineering works with different aspects of environment protection and conservation. For example, uh, air filtration, wastewater treatment, uh, waste food treatment, etc. So, in all of these uh, sections, like biochemical engineering can be used to find solutions. What is BOD? The BOD is biological oxygen demand, in which gives us an estimate of how much oxygen will be taken up out of the organic compounds present in that water sample. So high BOD is bad or low BOD is bad? High BOD is bad, sir. High BOD is bad. Now, what is green accounting? Sir, green accounting is a method of natural resource uh, counting in which we take into account the effect, impact and resources that the environment has provided us, all the services that the environment provides us when we are accounting for resources of that region. You know, say for example, uh, I say green accounting of Tata Motors. What does it mean? I want green accounting uh, maintained by the Tata Motors. What does it mean? Sir, in this context, green accounting would mean that apart from in, in usual accounting practices, we take in all the economic variables such as profits and revenue and turnover. But when we talk about green accounting, we also take into account the impact of these of the company on the environment. What are the positives? What are the negatives? And the net sum of that. Who coined this word, green account? Who started this concept of green account? Sir, I am not aware of who started it, but it is supported by United Nations as well because they have also formed a body which gives us rules for green accounting. So if I ask you that uh, our country should uh, ensure green economy, what does it mean? Sir, a green economy is a broader uh, perspective on looking at the economy of a country which apart from goods and services manufactured by humans uh, by us also takes into accounts the goods and services obtained from the environment and the uh, negative impact of uh, our activities on the environment as well so it takes a more comprehensive broader picture what are the principles of green economy and what should we do to maintain green economy so there are three broad pillars that we can look at if you want to maintain a green economy. A, uh, energy. B, circular economy in terms of consumption and production. And uh, thirdly, biodiversity conservation. These three would form broad pillars of a good healthy green economy. What about low carbon? Yes, sir. So low carbon would be, uh, in, would be included in the first pillar, which is energy, because most of the carbon emissions come from non-renewable fossil fuel energy. So we are looking at reducing carbon emissions uh, by using renewable energy. Should it be inclusive? Yes, sir. In fact, inclusivity is one of the bone of contentions when it comes to renewable energy because developing nations have to uh, develop, have to bring in infrastructure energy to their people. And for that, they need energy and they need fossil fuels at this moment and they want a slow transition to uh, renewable energy. So definitely steps should be taken to ensure that it is inclusive and sustainable as well. How many Prime Ministers Uttar Pradesh has given to our country? Sir, Uttar Pradesh has given eight Prime Ministers. Eight or nine? I remember eight but I could be wrong. So Okay, okay. tell me three individuals of Uttar Pradesh who have been awarded Bharat Patna. Sorry, sir. I I am not aware of uh, exactly. If you are aware of names of the prime minister which Uttar Pradesh has given, you find out number of them from out of them only. Sir, I am not aware which of them have gotten Bharat Ratna. All actually, right, all right. Yeah. what is a kind of some some people are proposing a name change for Lucknow? What is the name which people are suggesting? Sir, the name change is uh, right now in the in just discussions and proposals. Uh, but if it is approved, then it will go through the due process. But what name is in the air? I mean, what is under discussion amongst people? 
what name they want for lucknow sir as far as i have heard the root of the name has to be changed to lakshman uh, which is what people assume that we support that. this uh, kind of name changing sir i believe that uh, the people of the place with the people who are living over there uh, if they feel that there is ample uh, if there is ample popular support for the name change along with uh, historical background along with cultural sentiments attached to it then name change can be considered so in a democracy what measures popular yeah, support very... sir in a representational democracy like uh, india the house of the lower house represents the popular uh, people's choice all right thank you anuja recently there were some uh, there was a big investment meet in up what was the outcome of it ma'am the recent up investor summit was a tremendous success in terms of investments to the state around 500 mous have been signed with different companies and around 30000 crores of investment is being looked forward for investment these are temporary numbers that we have right now uh, and most of these uh, investments are into new sectors as well for example renewable energy has emerged as the number one sector for investment along with that apart from conventional investment region which is around the ncr we have also received investments for bundelkhand and kurunoor region this time see very often it's uh, you know the experiences sometimes these mous and all remain on paper what is your feeling is there enough drive in the state to see that they get translated mama i agree with you that uh, the signing of the mous is not the end goal it has to be seen through uh, but this time i feel that there is intention as we can see with up's budget also which just recently got released that capital expenditure is being pushed it is the uh, one of the highest uh, allotments to capex this time so this will also help in crowding in of private investment which has been brought in through the investor summit anuja in sports there is uh, under the world anti doping agency a mandatory clause no where about policy do you know what that is about one of uh, our gymnast also got uh, you know she was under this policy banned for 2 years what is the where about policy Um, sorry ma'am i don't think that i know the exact uh, the government recently announced a three pronged push along the border with the lac what was that three pronged push uh, india is looking to actively uh, develop and increase its presence along the lac which is the which is along uh, bordering china uh, we have three approaches to that a we are uh, building more indo tibetan police forces uh, battalions and increasing their recruitment secondly we are also pushing for civilian infrastructure such as roads and bridges uh, over there and thirdly we are also uh, looking at our army presence and uh, upgradation of army and its equipments weaponry etc so these are the three what, major uh, what about a tunnel yes ma'am we are also looking to um, looking to build more uh, upgrade the existing ones because they provide um, all weather connectivity to the remote regions for example we have zojila tunnel in jammu kashmir we have atal tunnel also which connects leh so we are looking at tunnels also in this particular there is another tunnel being uh, suggested anyway why are we focusing now on the region along the lac ma'am there are two perspectives on this first is the short term perspective the increased uh, attention to the lac has come because of the 2020 and the 2022 uh, clashes at the lac in ladakh and arunachal pradesh respectively and the long term perspective is ma'am uh, china's increasing ambitions in the region and increasing uh, territorial as well as maritime um, enhancement of its boundaries so india is looking to be prepared and have a proactive approach to this issue okay anuja what are organic pollutants ma'am organic pollutants are pollutants which are uh, carbon organic compounds such as benzene and uh, and other organic compounds car- organic carbon compounds okay is there any international convention to kind of guide the countries of the world in the how to deal with 
organic pollutants yes ma'am there is there is an international convention uh, regarding uh, organic pollutants especially in the chemical and fertilizer industry now as far as i can remember the name of the convention is stockholm convention yes that specifies rules for trans border movement of such uh, organic pollutants as well what is the process how do they specify the movement is there any procedure before transportation ma'am in my knowledge there are uh, concentrations of different compounds mentioned which are allowed for transport uh, between nations and so that one nation does not become a dumping ground for the wastes of another nation anuja uh, they say that today a diplomat's role is more challenging and difficult than ever before what do you think about that um i believe that in today's world we are seeing new challenges which are unprecedented so that is why the role of a diplomat has become uh, more challenging for example there is growing uh, regionalism and a, a slow decline of multilateralism which we saw during the heights of globalization and there is and along with regionalization there comes in uh, various blocks or various nations who are putting their own interests um and priority so to balance all of these interests together a balancing act which india is actually doing right now as well is one of the um, major new challenges that a diplomat is facing right now what about uh, social media and uh, access to information yes ma'am definitely in today's time information as well as misinformation has become rampant so and in terms of uh, in terms of a global order this problem increases in magnitude of misinformation and also uh, because of media reporting and because of people reporting as well today is a time where um, there is increased transparency and accountability which is positive but there is also um, increased surveillance increased um, tensions because of such uh, mechanisms okay. anuja if you got the foreign service what long language would you opt for foreign language i would like to opt for french if if i if i'm given an opportunity ma'am i spent 3 4 months in france for a student exchange program uh, wherein uh, i had a great time trying to learn the language which i am did not quite master it i would like to have another opportunity at that and which uh, areas would you like to focus on if you were in the foreign service i would like to focus on the conditions of indian workers who are abroad whether that's in in middle east or in other countries as well that would be a priority for me uh, secondly in terms of the recent events that have happened uh, the a uh, support and evacuation of indian nationals in different countries during times of crisis is another priority that we should be i would like to look at um and thirdly ma'am i would also like to focus on uh, bringing indian culture and indian um, awareness about india to all of all of our uh, indian diaspora living outside Anuja, you've talked only about Indian, Indian, Indian. You're a diplomat. Are you dealing only with Indians abroad? Yes, uh, you are correct. Here, I was talking about steps that can be taken for Indians living abroad, but uh, definitely there are more aspects to it. Like, for example, ma'am, as you mentioned, uh, social media presence in today's time. So uh, we could use social media to increase uh, engagement and increase our friendship. uh between the two countries so that can be done um secondly we can also look at increasing our economic ties and our trade relations and how both of these countries can complement each other in the growing uh, time of deglobalization try to uh, work through that so that is also something that we can look at okay thank you anuj uh, miss anuja in the uh, olympics which were held in 2021 Did India get any medal in the field of athletics? Yes, sir. We got one medal in the field of athletics, which is a gold and javelin throw. Who was that? It was Mr. Neera Chopra, sir. That's right. Okay. Now tell me, there is a river linking project in Madhya Pradesh to provide uh, irrigation facilities in the Bundelkhand region. Which project is this? This is the Kane Bitwa River Linkage 
project. Yes. How will it bring water to the Bundelkhand area? Sir, it will uh, divert surplus water from the Kane River to the Bitwa River in times of scarcity of water in Bundelkhand. And that water will be diverted through channels to help irrigate the fields in the Which dry Which means land. there will be a canal from uh, the from uh, Kane River to the Betwa Basin, right? Yes, sir. Is there anything to be constructed uh, on the Kane River? So, in my knowledge, we should also be looking at a barrage. Yeah, a dam. You are right. A dam is to be constructed on the Kane River. A canal which will carry the water into the Betwa Basin and then on to uh, subsequently to other areas. Okay. Now, tell me, uh, the Nord Stream oil pipelines, this was in the news recently. Uh, why was that? So, the Nord Pipeline connects uh, Russia to European countries, especially Germany and supplies natural gas from Russia to Germany and other countries to meet their energy needs. And it was currently in the news because due to the, uh, due to the Russia-Ukraine conflict, the West, the NATO and those nations have uh, decided to uh, reduce their dependence on Russian energy sources. Yeah, that is one. But a American journalist called Seymour Hirsch has claimed that one of the, the destruction of one of these pipelines was done by the US. Did you read about that? Sir, I must have missed this uh, piece of news, but I would like to know. Yeah. Yeah. So just check up on that because he has come up with this that uh, the Nord Stream 2 pipeline was damaged uh, in September last year by the US. And what is surprising is that except for Russia, which has lodged a strong protest, there has been no response from Germany or any of the countries uh, in Europe which were impacted by this. Uh, now, uh, if you have been reading the media press, very recently three senators in the US had introduced a resolution regarding Arunachal Pradesh. Did you read about that? I do recall reading about it, but I am unable okay. to recall. Okay, no problem. Now, uh, you are you are in UP, and uh, your father was uh, belongs to uh, Allahabad, Prayagraj. What they, they have this Kumbh Mela every year. What is the significance and the historical background to this? Sir, the Kumbh Mela is held at the Sangam, which is the confluence of the Ganga, Yamuna, and a third spiritual river, Ganga, Yamuna, Saraswati, and the which is uh, not physically present right now. Uh, Prayag was um, was a place where during the Samundra Manthan, one of the drops is said to have spilt there and that is why it is considered a holy pilgrimage for Hindu, uh, uh, for the Hindu religion and its cultural significance is that uh, it is the, it is an event in which the highest number of people come together in the world to, uh, to for, for a pilgrimage. And uh, there, there are a number of uh, uh, holy rituals and number of traditions which are carried out over there. there. It is a confluence of cultures as well. And it's also an event that showcases India's uh, cultural vibrancy. Okay. Now, but what is the significance of it is Magh Mela every year and a Kumbh Mela after so many years? How do you explain that? Sir, I have read up on this, but uh, currently... Actually, okay. So, we end your mock interview. So, we wish you all the very best. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much, ma'am. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to never miss an update.